The Celtics have had to make some massive decisions in the last couple of days. They recently just had to guarantee all four of their contracts to their partially guaranteed guys and Sfima High, Luke Delano, Banton, Luke Cornette, and Lamar Stevens. And they also are experienced to be expected to make a trade at the trade deadline. All of that and more to break down on this episode of Celtics Digest. What's up, guys? I'm Bruce Velez. But before we dive into this episode, I would like to say that roughly right around 79% of our viewers are not subscribed. And we'd greatly appreciate it if you guys hit that big old red subscribe button and join the Celtics Digest family. We're getting closer and closer to our goal of 3,000 subscribers. So if you guys want to make sure you stay up to date on daily Boston Celtics content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and subscribe. You definitely will not regret it. But let's dive into the news at hand today. So make sure to grab a snack as today's episode is going to be jam-packed as we dive into this article from Mass Live. And it's saying that the Celtics are expected to make a move. In recent videos, we've been talking about the Celtics partially being able to make a move. A lot of people are saying, don't blow up the roster, don't do anything. But the Celtics have some small contracts that they could use in a trade if they want to get somebody. Or they have the Grant Williams traded player exception from the offseason that they required that they can use to acquire someone underneath $6.2 million. But let's dive in this article. First, we got a tweet today from the NBA Central saying that the Celtics are widely expected to make some moves ahead of the trade deadline, and that was for per Brian T. Robb. He works for Mass Live and is a big Celtic contributor. And on this tweet, it came with an article. So we'll dive into it and in saying that the Celtics roster remains fully intact on Monday, according to a league scores indicating that the team has elected to, to let four contracts become fully guaranteed for the season. Boston could have waived any of Delano Banton, Luke Cornett, Sfima Hailuk, or Lamar Stevens before Sunday evening if they wanted to avoid fully guaranteeing any of their contracts for this season. However, uh, before, but however, on Tuesday's NBA season guarantee, but Brad Stevens said that Boston's front office elected to retain the quarter for players for now, and the decision he hinted at last week in a press conference. So this is ultimately good for the Boston Celtics. They get to keep some guys in Sfima Hailuk, Delano Banton, Luke Cornett, and Lamar Stevens. Luke Cornett had probably the biggest and more prominent, most prominent role out of all these guys. But we've seen Lamar Stevens start with a weekend back court or weekend front court, excuse me. We've also seen guys in Sfima Hailuk and Delano Banton get some run as the first guys off the bench and look all right in their lineups. So keeping these guys could help the Celtics, you know, match all their salaries future in the future at the trade deadline when they want to combine all four of those deals to get a guy. Or they could, you know, sprinkle two or three of those guys to get a deal done. We want to keep diving in. Brad Stevens says that he's been really pleased with all four of those guys and Tuesday and Thursday's response to a question from Mass Live. And he says he doesn't want to, he, I don't know what to say, what we do or we don't do. I don't ever want to speak in absolutes, but I've been really impressed with all those guys. They've all come in and done well for us. And I would agree with Brad Stevens on that situation. Luke Cornett has had a little bit of some shaky games where he's had some shaky starts, but he's held his own in some games. And when the Celtics play through them on offense, you could see that he can be a scorer for the Boston Celtics. He did that in the last game he started versus the Toronto Raptors. A guy in Sfima Hailuk has kind of, you know, gotten probably the least run out of this rotation just because the Celtics already have some great guards and Sam Hauser is kind of a similar type of play style than Sfima Hailuk, just a little bit better defensively, a little bit bigger and a bigger wing guy so he can help out on the defensive side of the ball and that's why Sam Hauser's got a more prominent role. But we've seen Delano Banton get some starts and get some big men off the first guy off the bench minutes and look to be, you know, a solid contributor for the Boston Celtics as a third point guard. Very good defensive fit in some matchups as well. And even Lamar Stevens, like I mentioned, has seen some run where with the front court being a de completely depleted he had to be in there for the Boston Celtics as a starter for a couple games so we've seen Lamar Stevens hold his own a little bit some of these guys like I said they don't stand out they're not fantastic players for the Boston Celtics but they are key contributors that can help in every single night the Lionel Banton can be a great defender. Sweema Hailuk, if he can get hot, if he is called in, can hit some shots for the Boston Celtics. And guys like Luke Cornett can play some solid defense and get some rebounds. And Lamar Stevens brings a lot of energy. And that is why Brad Stevens is a big fan of these guys and keeping them on his team. We want to keep looking at the article. It says that Boston's willingness to retain all of these non-guaranteed deals is a serious strong sign that the team's ownership is willing to add on to the luxury bill in the coming weeks as the trade deadline approaches. While same, some names that were guaranteed are no-brainers, Cornette is a rotational center, Banton is under team control for next season, Stevens and Mahaluk have been depth players who have been sporadically used when the Celtics are healthy, which is true. The fact that contracts are guaranteed now does not mean that they will finish the season in Boston, though. 
Source tells MassLive the Celtics could still elect to package several minimum, minimum salaries and another players to make a deal for a player who would not fit into the 6.2 million Grant Williams trade exception. Stevens and Mahaluk salaries could va- be valuable to us on that front, and whereas waving, where, whereas waving them this weekend would have made salary matching and that type of deal a lot tougher for Brad Stevens. And I agree with this article. Like I mentioned, the Celtics could use some of these smaller salaries to combine and use them in a deal for a guy that is above the $6.2 million TP. A guy that we've mentioned in the past that has been in the rumors recently is Chris Boucher. The Celtics could use a bunch of their, you know, two, three million dollar contracts to combine that, work up to Grant Boucher, Chris Boucher's eight, eleven point two billion dollar contract, and then they can facilitate a trade with a couple small end guys, some picks to the Toronto Raptors, and bringing in a nice guy for the bench. Or if the Celtics want to do the smart thing, in which they should do, is they should prioritize this traded player exception that they received in the offseason from Grant Williams going to Dallas. Obviously, the Celtics took no salaries in return from that deal in that in that sign and trade and had to get the Spurs involved because they did not want to take a contract back. They wanted to have that flexibility. They did not want to have to waive a guy. They did not want to have to take a guy that would be useless on their team. So, therefore, Celtics elected for a traded player exception would use it in the when it gets closer to the deadline and the Celtics lose it at the end of this year. So they have to use it at this season. Trade deadline seems perfect as it's the last time you can acquire somebody. And it makes sense because the Celtics could use a guy that could fit their team for $6 million instead of just trading for a guy, hoping that he would just bank out and be a perfect role player. Celtics can kind of play with their roster, figure out what they need necessarily, and then go after that guy. Do they need another guard who can facilitate the offense? Do they need another big or do they want to develop a name as Kaba and Luke Cornette? We'll have to wait and see. But one thing is for sure, the Celtics are expected to be involved at the trade deadline. As you can see, ultimately, multiple league sources have indicated to Mass Live that the Boston Celtics are strongly expected to make some kind of move ahead of the trade deadline. Keeping the team's roster fully intact now past the guaranteed deadline keeps more potential opportunities open for getting a deal done to bolster back the end of the roster. And like we've mentioned, the Celtics only have 14 guys signed to their current roster. Their two-way guys were guaranteed, so Namus Keita is guaranteed on a two-way deal, and he could work up to that full contract deal if the Celtics want to play him in the playoffs. But the Celtics could also look at some other bigs that we mentioned in the past, guys like Andre Drummond, Xavier Tillman, maybe even a nice wing in Sadiq Bey, or even a nice guard wing in John Conchar. The opportunities are endless for the Boston Celtics to go out and pursue these guys. The only way that they will be able to get these guys, though, is obviously not including any of their top seven. They'll either be using some small contracts at the end, like guys they just guaranteed in Banton, Svima Hailuk, and Lamar Stevens, or they'll ultimately use that Grant Williams traded player exception. I want to know what you guys think in the comment section down below, though, so let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions. What do you guys think the Celtics should do? And if they do make a trade, what do you think they should do? Do you think they should use the smaller end of the contracts, or do you guys think they should use the Grant Williams TPE? Personally, I'm a big proponent in using the TPE. We only have it for this season. We're going to lose it at the end of the year. Might as well get our bang of our buck, get someone who's going to fit into our role and be an effective piece for the team. No need to trade a bunch of guys to then, you know, call up some G-leaguers to fin out the end of the roster. And if injuries somehow go down at the end of the year, then the Celtics are a little bit stagnant and screwed. I personally would rather the Boston Celtics keep these guys like Stevens, Banton, Cornette, just as there's some of the end of the bench guys, and just bring in one last guy to finish the job. That's what we're going to be breaking down on this episode of Celtics Digest. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.